Anyway, good morning, morning. And, and welcome to Chester. And we're really excited today because we're going to do a complete circuit of Chester's medieval walls. And this is one of the oldest and most complete circuits of medieval walls in the whole of the UK. In fact, this place has been fortified since it was the Roman fortress of Diva Victrix. And the stone fortifications date from around AD 70 and were modified by the Saxons and then the Normans later. But in this section right here is one of the few sections where you can see the original stone bricks that were actually hand carved by the Romans all the way back nearly 2,000 years ago. And we're really excited, we're going to do a complete circuit. And? Well, while in the bus station, we picked up a map of Chester. And on this map, it points out various places of interest around the walls. So we're really looking forward to that, aren't we? So join us as we complete the circuit of Chester's medieval walls. Bye. So we're going to start our circuit of the walls at the North Gate. And it is exactly what it says. It's the northernmost entrance to the city walls and is on the site as the original Roman gate. Again, here we have a fantastic information board and the walls are made from Cheshire sandstone, which give it that distinctive red colour. This section of the walls runs alongside the canal. And again, you can see the distinctive uh, Roman blocks used in the lower sections of the wall. As well as being the site of the original northern gate from the Roman fortress, this area was also once used to house the city jail. The existing gate here has been here since 1808. Just inside the gate is a set of access steps which take you up onto the walls themselves. We're navigating the circuit of walls in a clockwise direction. Never reach shredded wheat, as they say. The walls are about two kilometers in length to do a complete circuit. And it is actually the longest circuit of medieval walls in the UK. Even on a winter's day, there are some fantastic views across towards the cathedral. Our first point of interest is known as King Charles Tower. It was once a medieval watchtower, but fell into disrepair. It was leased to the Guild of Painters of the city who refurbished it, and it became known as the Phoenix Tower, which is why we've got a coat of arms of a phoenix above the main door. It is said that King Charles I watched his royalist forces get defeated at the Battle of Rout Moor here, although there is some dispute over that. However, it is in fantastic condition. In fact, the story of King Charles watching the defeat of his forces in the English Civil War is marked on a plaque above the main door to the upper floors. However, this door remains locked. This view down in the cathedral district with its beautiful cobbled streets. Just off the walls by the cathedral is the tiny Cailyard's Gate, and this gate was requested in the 13th century by a group of monks. They wanted access to their gardens just that lay outside the city walls. After much debate, permission was granted, but the provision was that this gate would have to be locked shut at 9 o'clock every evening. And to this day, this gate is locked every day at 9pm, and this is marked on a sign on the gate itself. Security of the city was, of course, really important, so it's no wonder they wanted to make sure their city borders and boundaries were firmly secure every night. The magnificent Chester Cathedral has been at this site since the 7th century. It also houses a shrine to St. Verberg, which has a link to our previous video where we walked around Weedon Beck, as Weedon Beck was the site where St. Verberg was said to have banished the geese. We'll go into the cathedral later and take a look. soon approached the famous Eastgate clock, which was built in 1899 to celebrate Queen Victoria's Diamond Jubilee, and the letters VR are marked in gold above the clock face. It's also supposed to be one of the, the most popular and most photographed clocks in the whole of the UK, second only to Big Ben. It does get very popular and very busy. Eastgate itself is another one of the original gates for the Roman fortress. soon takes you to Newgate. This is one of the newer gates on the city walls. It's thought to date to the 16th century. It is, however, very close to some of the Roman ruins. And just below are some of the Roman ruins of the original Roman bastions of the walls in this part of the city. And just away from that, you can see the Roman amphitheater. 
this gate was built on the original site of the old Pepper Gate. And there is an old saying associated with the Pepper Gate that says, if your daughter is stolen, then close the Pepper Gate, which is an old fashioned way of saying shutting the door after the horse has bolted. Off the top of the new gate, there's some really great views across the old Roman amphitheater and towards St. John's Church, which has been there since the 8th century. This gate was winded in the 1930s to allow cars to pass underneath it. And just the other side of Newgate, you get some fantastic views across the Roman gardens. Within the Roman gardens is a section of raised hypercourse and various columns and pillars that have been excavated from the various archaeological digs that have taken place across the city. And this section of the wall takes you down towards the river. You soon find yourself at the river area where you can take one of the boat cruises up the River Dee. These steps are known as the Recorder Steps and were erected in AD 1700 by a Roger Cumberbatch so that he could access his house allegedly. The wall walk soon takes to a spot which provides fantastic views across the River Dee and the Old Dee Bridge, which is the oldest bridge across the River Dee at this location, with the original bridge dating from Roman times. It has of course been rebuilt several times over the years, and the weir here was built by the Normans in 1092. This bridge gate spans across the road from the Old Dee Bridge. Going off bridge gate, you have to walk along the road for a very short section before rejoining the walls. This section takes you underneath the shadow of Chester Castle, a former military barracks, now a military museum. Soon the wall walk takes you alongside the Rudy, the UK's oldest race course, and they've been racing horses here since 1539, where permission was granted by Sir Henry G, and that's why horse racing is known as the GGs, believe it or not. Sat in the middle of the race course is the remains of an old stone medieval cross. This is known as the Rudy, taken from the Anglo-Saxon word Island of the Cross. And the reference to the island is reference to the fact that this area was once a Roman port and excavations have revealed fantastic Roman fortifications and foundations of docks. Reflecting the fact that this area used to be a Roman port and dock, the next gate that you come across is known as Watergate. And this area ceased being able to be used as a port in medieval times as the River Dee silted up. the northwestern corner of the city walls are two impressive stone towers. One is known as Bone Waterstone Tower and is thought to have been built by Queen Etherfled to protect the city against invaders coming up the River Dee. The later tower, known as the Water Tower, is said to have been built in the 1300s. So we're back now on the northern stretch of the city walls and we've nearly completed our circuit. This attractive feature is known as Pemberton's Parlour and it was built on the site of a ruined tower known as Goblin Tower. It was, the work was overseen by a former mayor of Chester, John Pemberton, hence the name. And the end of the wall walk soon comes into sight, but not before you've got a chance to access a fantastic viewpoint known as Morgan's Mount. Morgan's Mount takes its name from the famous Captain Morgan, who defended this battlement with cannon fire during the English Civil War. Here we are back at Northgate where we started this fantastic walk. Where we started this fantastic walk. Hey, lad. Well, there we are. We're done. We've done the whole circuit of the city walk. That's what do you think? Yeah, I thought it was really good. Um, quite easy walking um, for for young and old alike. Yeah, um, yeah not too many steps or anything not like many that. Steps, no. Very easy to access. Yeah. Um, Fantastic history, of course, and some lovely views across these amazing areas views. As well. Yeah, it. and I could imagine on on a really nice sort of summer day, the gardens would be um, a 
you know, lovely, sit there with a picnic or something like that would yeah. be wonderful. We did this in January. Yeah. So. <laughs> Not the most pleasant of weather. No, but still nice. Didn't rain. Well, look, thanks for joining <laughs> us, and hopefully you'll join us on our next adventure. Yeah, definitely. Bye. Bye. If you like what we do, why not like and subscribe? Cheers. Thank <laughs> you.